What's up guys, in this video we're going to be going over a plugin called Startify. So as always, every single command that you need to do all this will be over on my blog. Um, you can follow the development for this stuff over on my GitHub. Uh, make sure to leave a star, fork it if you want to. I accept uh, pull requests if you want to make one. But let's, let's get started. So first thing you're going to want to do is plug in Startify. Um, use your favorite plugin manager. We've gone over that in a few other videos, so you should be familiar with that. Uh, creating a config file. So if you're new to the channel, then you probably um, don't know that like how I do the config stuff, right? So I keep all of the configuration in a directory called plug config, right? So here's all of the different configurations I have, like from the last video, FZF or um, COC, um, all that kind of stuff, right? So I have one in here called start screen for this. The reason I didn't call it startify is because it actually, there's conflictions if you call it startify. So I just opted not to call it that. Um, so make sure you create this. Then the next thing I just kind of want to go over is, I guess before I start going over sessions is what is startify, right? So most people just see Startify as this. If they've ever used it before, they're just like, oh, okay, it has some of my recent files, maybe some directories down here, uh, but they're not sure you know, what else Startify can do. But it can do a, a good amount more than this, and it's definitely more useful than this. So yes, it does do your files. So these are all my most recently opened files, the, my nine most recently opened files. Also, it tells you the current directory that you're working in and, you know, the files that are in that current directory. I think it only shows 10, 10 of them by default. So, you know, it'll show me my init.vim and everything that you would have seen if I ls, right? So if I ls in here, well, that's the thing about it, right? So if I do this and I ls in here, then this is looking in my current working directory from VCS, right? So VCS being version control system. So it found the .git folder. It went, it went up from where I was, like just a second ago, I was, I was CD'd into plug config. And it went up from there and found a .git, and then it was like, oh, okay, this is your current working directory. This is a project. So that's kind of how it shows you your project, just as like a high level overview right here. Um, so the next thing we'll go over is sessions. So sessions are pretty cool. So I'll just click on one first, just to show you how it'll work, and then we'll create a session really fast. All right, so this session was something that I was doing before. I was just, I guess, in this file, and I was looking through a few different files, right? And when I saved the session, it just, it saved all of these buffers that were open for me and put me right back in the position that I was when I left. So I'll show you how you can do that. Let's open init.vim, and then we'll start opening a few other things. And so you can navigate to all of your plugins really fast if you do it this way just by pressing GF over top of anywhere on this string here, right? So if I go GF, I'll jump over to the configuration. By the way, you can press Control O to come back, right? So let's go to another one, and then we'll come back, and let's go to another one, and then we'll come back. All right, so we have a good amount of stuff open here. So let's now do save, right? Well, I'll just put an S, and you can see it at the bottom here is where I'm doing that. So I just put an S, and now I'm gonna press Tab, all right, so now, whoops, now you can see here are all of the things you can do with S, right? So what we're looking for is S save, and then also another one in this would be S load. So let's do S save first. And now it's gonna ask me for a session name. So I'm gonna call this, um, I already have a test in there, so I'm gonna call this test two. All right, and so now it says session saved under homechris.config nvim session test two. How did it know to put it there? Well, right here, I told it to put it there. I said, this is where I want to keep all of my sessions. Startify, put all of my sessions right here. Um, if you don't know, sessions were already a thing that you could have used, right? But I think that this plugin makes them a little more intuitive and a little more visible too. And just kind of makes them easier. You have two very simple commands to save and load them. You can set the directory just, you know, super simple right here. And then you can go and see them when you go back to Startify, which will open up every single time that you just type plain mvim. Um, so now that we've gone over the current directory, we'll go over sessions again. So here we are. I save session two, and here it is. So if I press enter over it, here I am. 
I'm back in my session. All right. So now let's go over the lists. And so you should probably already be seeing, if you're looking at this lists uh, configuration here, what's happening here. So this one is named files. And that's why you see files right there. It's a header. It's the type. So these are internal types to startify the plugin. This is my files. So this is all of the recent files that I've opened uh, recently, right? So this is the last 10 files that I've opened all over my system. After that, what you'll see is, and I named it, and you can name these whatever you want, and you can put them in any order that you want. You could put the bookmarks at the top, you could put the sessions at the top, you could put the, your current working directory at the top, you can do whatever you want. You don't even need to have get current working directory, I don't think, there. But what we have is we have, okay, current directory, that's what that says, right? And then we pass git uh, CWD, which stands for current working directory. Um, and it's of type dir, so that's, that's an internal type to startify. Same thing with sessions. We have sessions down there, which I just showed you. And then after sessions, uh, you should see bookmarks. So let's go over here and look at bookmarks. All right, so what are bookmarks? So bookmarks are things that you will actually define in your config file. So you'll put this in there. And I'll show you the config file eventually. But you'll put this in there. And then what you can do is you can press Enter over top of them, right? Like if you've given them a, um, a character. So like I gave some characters to these files here at the top. So for instance, if I press, if I, press I, I go to my init.vim. So anytime that I open up Startify, I can just press I and I'm in init.vim really fast. And this works for any file that you want to edit or anything that you want to edit, right? So for instance, you know, I want to go to my blogs really fast. And I have other ways to get, my, get to my blogs really fast, but you know, maybe I want to do it this way. I just press enter over that, and then if you look, this is all of the topics on my blog. So I can just jump to that directory really fast, which is pretty cool, if you want to do it that way. So now we'll get out of here. Uh, and then, all right, and so yeah, so that works for files, and it works for uh, directories as well. All right, so let's go over a few of the configuration options. So. Uh, this is just from, for auto-loading the session, so you probably want that. Um, this is an excerpt from his uh, from the documentation, and I'll show you the documentation too and how to get to it, because I feel like some people don't know how to actually get to all this documentation, and they're like, well, how did you know about all these settings? But I can, I'll show you that in a second. Hopefully I remember to. So if this option is enabled, you start Vim in a directory that contains a session.vim. Right, so if you create one, if you have a session.vim in there already, it'll auto-load it. So as soon as you do nvim, it'll just auto-load one of those sessions that I showed you earlier, which is pretty cool. This is similar to vimrooter. We went over vimrooter in the FCF video. So this is how the directories know where you are, that it's a project folder. Like you'll, you'll see, like if I, th this will make it intuitive, I think. If I go down, all right, I'm in a current working directory, this, right? And I probably should change it to current, like, project directory, right? And now if I go inside of plug config, which I should be in a new current, you know, directory now, right? But I'm not. I'm still in this directory. I'm still in the thing that has the dot git in it. That's, that's kind of the power of the change VCS to root, so that way it just sees all the directories that are... Um, in your project. So if I do ls-a in here, you can see the reason that it did that is because there's a .git right here and it found it. All right, so if you want Unicode, you can set that to one. Uh, automatically update sessions, you can set that to one. And uh, get rid of empty buffers and on, I think this should be on quit. And so essentially this will just get rid of all the em empty buffers that are open. You probably want to do that. The last thing is clearly probably a lot of people want to know you know, I mean, some people probably already know how to get ASCII art um, and how I'm putting this title thing here at the top, right? It ships with like a thing called Calse or something like that, which passes like these different um, things about uh, technology into what he says. I don't know. Anyway, so I changed it to this. And so how did I do that, right? If you look up, I think it was, this is one way to do it. There's a million ways to do it. So ASCII art generator. And I think it was like a, text one. You can do it like on this website and it'll give you different options. I think, yeah, here's the one I use for here. So you can choose, all right, let's see, let's test everything. Let's type 
neo them. And then let's test every option. So here we go. We just tested every single ways that you can like copy and paste this stuff and put it in there if you want to. So that's how we can change the header. Uh, there's also, if you want to do it from like CLI, you could do something like, and you could pass different things to this, but you could do figlet, right? So we'll just do figlet stuff. And you just copy and paste this in there. So figlet is another command that you can just install however you want. All right, jump back to the top here. And I think that's everything I wanted to go over just as a general overview for this thing. It does do more things. This is all the things that I really care about it doing. There's like a command section here. I don't use that. Um, yeah, and I was gonna say, so basically, you know, where am I getting all these commands from? How do I know to do all this stuff, right? So when you're looking at the readme, not everything is in the readme. So, you know, what you can do is you can do help startify, right? So we could always do, because he gave us a command for that, so help. And then I think maybe it'll pick it up, startify, yep. And you can see all of the different things you can do just from right inside Vim. So you don't need to be on his website or anything like that. You just read about it. So if you want to know more about sessions, We'll just look up, and maybe I shouldn't have capitalized it. But yeah, we'll just look up sessions, right? And then we'll start to see, like, all right, we'll go through everywhere where it says session, and we'll read about sessions if we want to know how this thing works with sessions. So that's one way. Um, another way is most, most of these repos, right, have a doc folder in them. And so what I was just reading was literally this, this exact same stuff. So you can read all through the docs. Did I read this entire document? I definitely did not. I just picked out the stuff that I was interested in. Um, it definitely does way more, and a lot of these plugins do way more than we even typically take advantage of. All right, so I think I've probably gone on for too long. So as always, you know, and I think I said this in the beginning of the video, check out the uh, repo, make sure to give it a star. Um, also, make sure to give a star to this guy, uh, the creator of Startify, I think his name's Mins or something, M Hins or something like that. Let's see, Marco Hins. There we go. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it.